So just about with anything in life, there's gonna be times when you're more passionate about a topic and then other things kind of bore you. But when it comes to YouTube, I kind of just have to do kind of a good mix of all the different kind of videos, whether I'm really passionate about it or not. This is one of those topics that I'm super passionate about and I can't wait to get into it. So let's go. Today we're talking about one of the best kept secrets in real estate. But before I get into that, be sure to hit that like button. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm. And of course, as always, if you like what you see, also hit that subscribe button so that you get notified whenever we post a new video each and every week. When I started in real estate, I thought that being a real estate investor was going to look something like this. In reality, it actually turned out to look something like this. I thought I was going to be able to jump into, you know, this this nice big apartment complex and just just go ham with all these rentals and it it definitely doesn't turn out to be like that. Unless you're independently wealthy or you have some other third party help, there's no way that you're gonna be able to jump straight into an apartment complex right away. For the rest of us, that means we have to start just a little bit smaller. Typically that'll be a single family home or maybe a duplex or a triplex. But even having said that, there's still a pretty steep barrier to entry when you're trying to get into real estate. All of these people out here can see the benefits and so they wanna get into it, but for your first investment property, usually you have to put 20 to 25% down, which for easy numbers, let's say you have a $100,000 house, that's still, you know, 20, $25,000 that you have to have laying around, which most people don't have. Even if you were to find a cheap property, which is, you know, 60 or 70,000, that's still $18,000 that you have to come up with out of pocket. And most people don't have that lying around. It's definitely doable. I don't want to discourage you, but just imagine when you try to get into a $300,000 property or even a $1 million property, having $200,000 in cash is really tough to come up with. Because there's such a steep amount of capital that's required to get into real estate investing, a lot of people shy away from it. So they'll start with something smaller like the stock market where they can just invest $50 or $100 as they have it. But today I'm going to talk about the best kept secret in real estate and why nobody's talking about it. Okay, you ready for this? The best kept secret in real estate is mobile homes. That's right, you heard me, mobile homes. Like, yeah, like mobile trailers. If you only remember one thing through the entirety of this video, I want you to remember that mobile homes are little boxes of cash. The way that I've thought about real estate investing has absolutely changed ever since we picked up our first mobile home. In fact, my wife and I, when we did our first deal, we actually got a trailer sitting in the backyard of one of the houses that we bought just as kind of a freebie. And it's turned out to be the best thing that we ever did. That kind of changed the way that we thought about real estate because before we had never even thought about picking up mobile homes as a real estate investment. So let's talk about why mobile homes and not a single family home or a multifamily like a duplex or a triplex like I mentioned earlier. Typically mobile homes are really inexpensive. It's not difficult to be able to find a trailer that's selling for $10,000 or less. The great thing about this is you can own it free and clear and not have a mortgage on it at all. And even better, you won't have a mortgage, but the trailer typically rents for about the same as an apartment in, in the same area. But the best part of all is that your ROI, your return on investment, is typically gonna be way higher than if you were to purchase a single family home or a multifamily property. Let's do some quick and easy sample numbers and just compare the numbers with a single family property and a mobile home. So think about this. Let's say you have a $100,000 house, just for easy numbers. You're gonna to have to put down 20% or $20,000. And then again, for easy numbers, let's say after, after the mortgage payment, vacancy, maintenance, everything, uh, you've got $200 net that you make at the end of every month. We're gonna take that $200, multiply it by 12 months in the year, and then we're going to divide it by the initial $20,000 investment that you put down when you purchase the property. $200 a month times 12 months is $2,400 divided by $20,000 comes out to a 12% ROI. You know, I mean, that's not too bad. That's better than you'd get in the stock market. But now let's do the numbers on the mobile home. Let's say we buy a trailer for $8,000. And let me tell you, this is actually a fairly conservative estimate, at least for my specific area. We've typically bought trailers for five or $6,000, but oftentimes even less. Again, $200 times 12 months, that's $2,400 net profit on this rental property. 
but instead of the $20,000, we're gonna divide it by the $8,000 that you bought the property for. 2,400 divided by 8,000 comes out to a 30% return on investment. Now think about that for just a second. You put down less cash, you own the property free and clear, there's way less risk, and you don't have a mortgage that you're paying off every month. This is what I meant when I said trailers are little boxes of cash. There's so much money and missed opportunity that people are just overlooking because they think it's a dumpy trailer. Now again, like I said, $8,000 is really a conservative estimate. I would never buy a trailer for $8,000. The other great thing about this is three, four, five, you know, 10 years down the road, whenever you sell this trailer, oftentimes you can sell it for exactly the same that you bought it for, if not more. And you'll probably fix up a couple of things. It, it very well could be worth more than you purchased it for. Worst case scenario, say you even just have to get out of the trailer, you walk away from it and just literally give it to somebody. The money that you've made from this trailer has paid for itself tenfold. Now you might be asking, okay, well, if $8,000 is too much money to pay for a trailer, how much should I pay? I, I guess I probably shouldn't have said that. $8,000 may be a really great price for a trailer in your area. It really just depends on where you live, what part of the country, what, you know, what rentals are looking like in your specific area. But there's a system that I came up with that I call the net 12, and it'll give you an exact number on the maximum amount that you should pay for any given trailer. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take the gross monthly rent that you think you can get from this specific trailer. Now, this isn't a guess. This needs to be an educated guess, and one of the best ways to do that is by looking on Craigslist. Go on Craigslist, look for houses that are currently for rent, and find something that's comparable to yours and see what they're renting it for currently. So say we have a trailer and it rents for $900 a month. You're gonna take that $900, multiply it by 12 months in a year, and you're gonna come out with $10,800. This is the gross annual rent that you're gonna make over the course of 12 months. From there, you're going to subtract all of your expenses. So you'll wanna subtract your monthly lot rent, your maintenance, vacancy, uh, property taxes, insurance, property management fees, anything that you can think of that's an expense that you as the, the owner of the property is going to have to pay on the renter's behalf. Let's say after all of these expenses, we're down to $5,000 net income. We're gonna take that $5,000 divided by 12 months and we're gonna come up with $450 per month. You're gonna take that $450 and divide it by eight months. So now why do we multiply it by eight months? I don't know, that's just a number that I picked and I decided that if I make money on this trailer eight months out of the year, I'll be set. So 450 times eight months is $3,600. $3,600 is the most that I'm gonna offer on this trailer. If for some reason this mobile home is just a really great deal, then the most I'll be willing to do is take that $450 a month and multiply it by 12 months out of the year to get $5,500. So the range that I'm willing to pay for this mobile home is anywhere from $3,600 to $5,500. Now, where's the best place to find these mobile homes for sale? The best place to find these is on the Facebook Marketplace. 95% of the time, you're gonna find these mobile homes that are for sale, but people are going to be asking way higher than they're actually gonna get and more than they're actually worth. For example, somebody might be asking $30,000, but they're likely only gonna get like a fifth or a quarter of that amount. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna open your phone and you're gonna wanna make sure that you have a smoking hot picture of your wife as your wallpaper. Then you're gonna open up your phone, load up Facebook, and right down here, you're gonna click on Facebook Marketplace. So up in here, up top, you'll search for mobile homes. And uh, you'll just start scrolling through and kind of see what, see what you can find. So right off the bat, I see this guy, it says 2019, brand new, $86,000. Uh, my guess is if you try and offer them $6,000 for this, they're gonna tell you to take a hike. Uh, this next one, three bed, two bath house for 13.5. It looks like it's a little bit rough. And, oh, it says it must be moved. So that's that one's not gonna work for us. Typically, I don't bother with it if it needs to be moved. I'd like to find something that is just sitting on a lot that I can take over because moving a mobile home is gonna be a couple thousand dollars easy. Mobile home in Archer. 
That doesn't look too bad. Country living, lot rent 290. Perfect, okay. So it can stay where it's at. And uh, it looks like the owner is willing to finance $5,000 as a down payment. So that's a, that's a good potential. There's no way they're gonna get uh, 21,000 for that. So that's something I might, uh, I might consider reaching out to and seeing if I could work with them on. Here's another one, 1978 for 10,000. Um, needs to be moved. Again, I probably won't deal with that one. States 36.9. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Lot deposit, lot rent 360. Okay, so again, that's another one that you could take over. So there's no way they're going to get thirty-seven thousand dollars for that. So that's another one that I would uh, that I would pursue and and potentially reach out to them and and see if there's some kind of deal that you could work out with them. So there are a couple of downsides with purchasing mobile homes as opposed to single family homes or a multifamily property. The first thing is that your mobile home is never, ever, ever going to appreciate. It's never going to go up in value where a single family home or some other property is almost always going to appreciate. That can be a little bit different if it's a mobile home affixed to a permanent foundation, but we're not interested in these properties because the ones that are attached to a foundation are going to be a lot higher and they're actually going to be selling more in the price range of single family homes. The second downside is that even though you own this trailer free and clear, you're going to have lot rent. So you're going to have to pay somebody a fee every month because your trailer is still sitting on somebody's land. So you might not have a mortgage, but you're still paying for lot rent. The good thing though, is that most lot rents include specific utilities like sewer, water, and usually garbage as well. When you're running the numbers on a mobile home, you need to take the lot rent into account just to make sure that you really can make a profit on it. As we come to a close, there's a couple more tips that I wanted to leave you guys with. The first being that when you buy a mobile home, it has a VIN number just like on a car. So when you go to buy this mobile home, you're actually going to exchange titles. So you'll give somebody the cash and they'll give you a title. What you'll wanna do is you'll wanna take the VIN number off of that title and you're actually gonna to wanna to call the DMV. You can call the DMV, give them this VIN number and you can check to see that there are no liens on the property. I know a guy that bought a mobile home as an investment property. So he paid the sellers, he got the title, he took that title to the DMV to register it, and it turns out that there were actually $2,000 in liens on this property. To be able to even register that, he had to pay that $2,000 in addition to the cash that he already gave them to purchase the mobile home in the first place. So be sure to take that VIN, call up the DMV. It's just a quick and easy way to make sure that there's no liens on this mobile home. The last tip that I'm gonna leave you with is the fact that cash is king. If there's a mobile home that you're interested in, but the sellers just really aren't willing to negotiate, take the cash that you're willing to offer for the property, go and knock on their door, and literally start counting the cash in front of them. I'm gonna show you the money. That's not so good. Show me the money. Show me the money. Yes! Louder! Show me the money. That's it, brother, you got to that shit. Show me the money. I need to feel you, Jerry. Show me the money! Jerry, you better yell! Show me the money! For some reason, when people see the green right there in hand, they're a lot more willing to negotiate. They may have listed this property for $30,000, but when they see $6,000 in hand, that's probably more cash than a lot of people have actually seen in person, and you'd be surprised what they'd be willing to take. So it turns out that real estate is a lot less complicated than people make it out to be. Real estate is all about coming up with a creative solution to either finance a property or just to you know mend this deal in a way that really conforms to your needs, but also meets the seller's needs as well. If you don't have 20, 30, or even $50,000 that you need to get started in a traditional investment property, then buying a mobile home is a great place to start. Use that to get your feet wet, and then from there, you can gradually schedule up and grow larger and larger. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Again, of course, as always, please like, please subscribe. If you have any questions about my process or any mobile homes that I've bought in the past, or maybe even just a potential deal that you're currently looking at, feel free to comment down below, and I'll be happy to help the best I can. Peace.